this final matchup. You chose Froggen from Alliance there on the screen. Yeah, going to do battle with Wei Zhao. And then, of course, they are going to go against Team Fire here for everything. The Super 1 versus 1 showdown is worth three points for the winning team. Let's talk about Froggen here for a second. Yes. Because he had an amazing performance on Anivia yesterday. Despite going up against Bjergsen Zed, he had a perfect <laughs> game. He never died, he went legendary, and he ended the game with a fully stacked Soul Stealer. And Meanwhile, some fire caper and uh, warmogs. <laughs> yeah, just added some defense in there as well. Meanwhile, Wei Zhao, he performed well against Double Lift in the early game. Uh, and typically, AD carries do perform very strong in these one versus one matches. He himself has hit challenger number one on the Chinese server. He was also voted into the All-Stars last year, playing in the 2v2 challenge, where he and Xiao Xiao lost to the eventual winners of the challenge, Prey and Mad Life. Now this matchup is the matchup that the fans voted for, you said. This is the one that everybody wanted, and this is what it all rides on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Froggen was uh, honestly the best mid laner in Europe. I think it's safe to say this season, and no doubt about it. You know, very much a stronger one. He dragged his team alliance, obviously, up to fourth place. I think it was in playoffs, third in the league overall. <laughs> he did. He dragged them screaming and kicking. He was the captain that tried to pull them up there. Wei Zhao, meanwhile, on Team WE, of course, they kind of fell off the perch. They used to be. They used to be the number one team in China. But you've got to argue the fact that OMG is here says that they are falling away. They are, but um, he has not lost his personal skill. Absolutely. He's Definitely still a not. top AD carry coming well, from China. And actually, you know, we, we obviously had Reckless here this weekend for Fnatic. And you think back to IPL5, Wei Zhao dumpstered Reckless at IPL5. He was unstoppable in that bottom lane. And that's what you've got to think about coming into this 1v1, that Froggen is a mid laner. We know that he can play pretty much every champion that you're going to give him to a very good level. I mean, we saw him playing in Aurelia, let's not forget. And obviously, he's learned a few tips from Wicked uh, on that one, <laughs> who uh, sees himself, I think, as the best Aurelia player in the world. Froggen's got something to say about that, but I think what Froggen said earlier about banning AD carries is an absolute must here <laughs> against someone like Wei Zhao. Well, here we go. Picks and bans underway. What will they go with? Will it be an AD carry? Will it be an AP champion, we do see the Varus and Quinn bands there, which we saw in game one between Archie and Shy. Of course, Quinn came out on top of that one, but they are all tied at 5-5. The winner of this game will be victorious. And honestly, the captain for Team Ice, you feel, has to have a lot of pressure on his shoulders here because he's just seen his his pairing of Mad Life and Double Lift losing. That's the, that's the one that should have won. And instead, Caitlyn is banned away. All AD carries so far. No surprises, honestly, when Wei Zhao's in the mix. Yeah, as you said, Froggen is a very versatile player. He can play AD carries, so Wei Zhao does not want to give him uh, Quinn as well. We just saw how strong Medulla's Quinn is. Even when Shy lost early, he still came back and was able to get the kill, get the win. Still like to see Anivia. Yeah, <laughs> I think the crowd would absolutely love it as well. I think you'd probably hover over it for a moment. Actually, uh, Lulu taking well, that's, away that's not surprising. Final Wei Zhao played it very well. We just saw with the stats. It's 14 to 11 or something like that. Crazy, oh. crazy stats. Ken in the final ban. And Froggen currently sitting through. Oh. Okay. Everybody's seen the Carthus yeah. LeBlanc discussion that Froggen's been having lately. Exactly. And, uh, and well, Faker believes it in uh, Carthus as well. And Froggen sometimes believes that there is not a lot that can beat Carthus. I'd be interested in whether he does put his money where his mouth is or whether he changes around, which he has currently. Interesting. Uh, Yasuo would be much more exciting. We would probably be able to see Whoa. a level one all in from a Yasuo. If you start with the dash and charge it up on all the minions, make use of your shield. We've seen many, many people go for very early all ins. And, with, and with people not taking flash on this, it truly is an all in. <laughs> You're not coming back out. This is not what I was expecting, that's for sure. And actually, now that I cast my mind back and I think of all the bans that have been going, there's been a lot of Yasuo bans against Frog, and we've never once seen it in the European LCS, this split, but it has always been banned against them. So it's clearly something that's been happening in scrims that's not allowed it through. Yeah, he was basically the first person that everyone was banning the Yasuo yeah. against when we first saw Yasuo actually coming into play. So this is an interesting one, the Javan as well, not a champion that I had we, we, uh, we, uh, that I had down for Wei Zhao. I'll get those words out now, but we'll have to see. I'm well, not sure about it. Our final duel is about ready to go, so tweet us at 
LOL Esports using hashtag Froggen or hashtag Wei Zhao and let us know who will win this challenge match. You got it right in the last one. They went for fire and fire managed to pull it equal. It is five all. This match means everything. Wei Zhao actually looked a little bit nervous there. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's a little bit scared of Froggen. His summer spells say that he's looking for the kill though because he's taking Ignite. Once again, we see someone with Ignite. He's got Barrier well, to back it up as well. You take a Jarvan, you're going to be going all in, that's for sure, of course. Could get a little bit of poke early on, maybe with the Dragon Strike going in there. Once that Flag Toss combo combos with it, he's looking to dive straight on to Froggen. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final challenge match of All-Star 2014 Paris. It is Froggen for Ice up against Wei Zhao for Fire. So, standard early start that we've seen from every single player so far, which is Red Pot and Health Potion. And there is the vote. 71% here for Froggen with the Yasuo. Now, uh, Froggen actually rushed the bush and Wei Zhao did not rush his side of the bush, but it doesn't matter because Froggen's so scared that someone's in there, he doesn't have long enough range to check it, that Wei Zhao's able to step in. And we get some fellows playing with weapons. That's about it. <laughs> Lots of swinging of the swords. That's all that Wei Zhao and Froggen are doing. A good dragon strike right now would catch him, actually, which I think he's going to open to look at starting a little bit of poke on Froggen. But the problem is, Froggen, with that wind that builds up, it does actually give him a little bit defensive points. It's pretty funny that you mentioned poke because this is not your usual poke. They both have very, very similar skills though. Just trying to stab each other with their pointy <laughs> ends. And so far it's Wei Zhao that's oh, pulling oh, Frog. He's got the experience advantage here. Oh. And keep him away from these last minions. <laughs> Doing a good job of that. 5-2 up here is Wei Zhao. I'm wondering if at level 2, is he going to go all in good on dodge. this one? No. It was, it's like a fencing match right now. Everybody's just going for points. If you can land one of the poke. Ooh, trying to pull the trigger. Tower hit actually on towards him. Red pot was used by Wei Zhao quite early on. Froggen has finally used his as well. But as you mentioned, he's got to be careful he doesn't lose out in the CS. I don't think it will happen. He's generally pretty hot on his CS, but he did lose that one. And that one. <laughs> Not so hot. Uh, Not so nice. hot. But wow. he does manage to get the knock up. But now there's a big hit point advantage over Wei Zhao. He's sliding around left and right. And he's keeping Wei Zhao guessing. And his tra his dash is fully charged up. So he's looking to take another trade. Oh, oh, Wei Zhao. Might be enough. This could be it. No, Barry actually forcing that barrier out there. And Froggen. And that's one of the problems that you're going to have against Yasuo. The fact that when there's a full minion wave there, he has so many targets just to dash, 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 dash around. and. It's very, very hard to control. And there is the health relic. Wish oh, I would oh. like that, but trying to push out there might just be the death of him. Frog and just going to pick that up. Uh, he was using it as bait for a little moment there. Didn't quite get the knock up on Wei Zhao this time around, but we already saw how dangerous the combo that is. And Wei Zhao is going to have to judge his next flag toss very carefully. He's going to back off. He's using the screen up just to double check oh. where the Froggen's going as well. Clever use, but Froggen. He stuck around, and Wei Zhao will be unaware of that one, but he's pretty clear that something's happening. Sticks around for a little bit longer. Wei Zhao's is longer. He gets the hit on Froggen, but he still has to worry oh. about the... He's in trouble. No, no. We don't know where Froggen's going right now. He's, <laughs> he's just he's just sliding. He's ice skating around the Howling Abyss. Excessive dashes. It only takes four to charge up fully and get that extra 100% damage. And the shield as well. Currently, Froggen is just brought the CS level, and again, we see Wei Zhao actually trying to escape from this one. Froggen will let him go this time around, so Wei Zhao is going to come in with the first items of this game. So a long sword, plus a health pot, plus a mana pot. We'll see how it helps him out here, where the Froggen's going to... I think he's going to clear this wave off and back off himself, actually. You can see he's putting... The Make sure he gets the last hit. Now he's going to step away. He's got his force built up completely. He's not going to do anything. No way, Zhao. He's just going to have to take the hit. So, Froggen build up a small gold advantage, and it's enough to get him a double Doran's Blade. That's a big difference. Yeah, being able to go back with an extra wave's worth of money is going to be huge because he already had the advantage on Wei Zhao, and now he's going to have the blades to back it up. Although he has no consumables, because it, it cost him the full uh, 900 gold that he had in his pockets. Oh, straight aggressive. Yeah, not messing around, that's for sure. Actually going in, Wei Xiao down to half HP. He's going to go through. Wei Xiao gets the help right next to Froggen. There is the knock up. No level six, of course. Froggen did actually use his summoner heal there. 
because he has no sustain to rely on. It's going to be ooh, very important for him to get the relic. Oh, the exhaust goes down. This could be it. Wei Zhao is in all sorts of trouble. Where's he going to go? Frog is just going to keep on building that crit hit up. He's completely separated Wei Zhao. One more hit. He's going to try to get to level six. Wei Zhao cleverly flag tosses away from this one. Frog and not going to land. And he does keep it safe for now. And that's going to give Wei Zhao preference. He's going to back the hell out of there. No, sticks around. He finally just popped his pot there, which uh, it was sad. I'm surprised he didn't go a little bit earlier on. And whoever hits level 6 here, Froggen, may just decide to go for that knockup. Wei Zhao can throw the ulti in there as well. There's a level 6 for Froggen! Gets the knockup as well! Oh. Wei Zhao finds away though! Oh, so that close. close. Wei Zhao absolutely has to back away this time. Froggen may go deep on this one. Yeah, second tower was required for Wei Zhao. That's going to give him a big advantage on the tower. He's got a lot of turret damage here. He might be able to finish it. There's a long walk back here for Wei Xiao. He can use his dash to get there a little bit quicker. And then the minion wave will actually run out here for Froggen. Another no, one uh, arrives no. just in time. He's got to use his dash. He's got to use the dash. Uh, He's got to go for this one. Wei Xiao's got to go all Dover. in, but I'm not too sure. I think Froggen may well get this one with the tower going down. One more hit should be enough. He sidesteps in, and Froggen takes the tower down and takes victory for T Ice here at the All Star Challenge in Paris. Fantastic victory there for Team Ice and coming down to the turret in the end and you see uh, hugs from the rest of his teammates who, I, I, they always have the faith in Frogan. You've got to have faith in a player like that. The Jarvan pickup was somewhat of a surprise to us. Actually, was for the early stage of that Doom well and was ahead on the farm. So Frogan did a great job of utilizing his dashes to make Wei Zhao second guess going in with his combo because Jarvan's combo is much thinner now. It's harder to hit. If Froggen's constantly dashing around and you miss that knockup, you're in big trouble. So Wei Zhao was very conservative with his knockups trying to go in for Froggen. What is when you use flash heal as well, right? Oh yeah. Uh, not flash heal, <laughs> sorry. Barrier heal. Barrier uh, heal, yeah. You can't you can't do that. Like you can't be caught out of position for him, so but what a great comeback for Ice. I mean, you saw the opening game, everyone saw it, and we were like, oh dear, this is not going to go well for Ice. Bjergsen on fire in that matchup, uh, no pun intended, but absolutely wrecked them in that game. But, you know, Ice, if that get that one game, and actually speaking to Froggen before, and, you know, he wanted to practice. His team were not around, they were splintered all over the place. But that whooping that Fire gave Ice in that day one, they embarrassed everyone on Team Ice and actually all the players, it actually brought them closer together because they, yeah. they all went, that is not happening again. So it drew them together and actually kind of did them a favor and Frog and Annie's team seemed to have turned out very well. But it was a great finish. Uh, you know, the fact that these 1v1s, it went so close, it went 5-5 five, five, and then all down to that one single super match, which we kind of thought it may well do actually, we weren't too sure, but uh, what a fantastic finish to the All-Star Challenge. It was pretty good. And you know, we do have to mention that Team Ice had a little bit of an advantage there with uh, Mad Life and Cool speaking a little bit of English. Yeah. They have enough to That's get true. by and communicate in game at least. So it did help them out when they were on the comeback and they needed to come back from that Bjergsen embarrassment. That's what really pulled them together, I think. Yeah. yeah and speaking to Frog, and he said he's actually communication wasn't that much of a problem. You'd only use one word, but everybody kind of knew what they're doing because everybody's played solo queue, everybody's played team games. They all knew what was happening. What a fantastic finish to All-Star Challenge. Let's send things over to Quickshot and the team at the Analyst Act to desk to wrap up the All-Star <laughs> Challenge. Thank you very much, Team A. Get a drink of water there. A little bit tongue-tied, it appears. So, at the end of the day, Team Ice come out victorious. It went all the way down to the wire, all the way down to the very last 1v1. Yeah. Before we get to that, let's break down the very first matchup. It was Archie, of course, taking on Shy, a Varus versus Quinn battle. And it definitely appears as though a bird, bird, bird. Bird is the bird. <laughs> Quinn came out on top. Frequent yeah. thing. Uh, so he definitely wasn't shy about all inning all the time. Uh, right. The the level one all in was not worth it because at first I was like, oh, Varus is a great pick against Quinn because Quinn has to all in and get into the minion line and pulled minion aggro doing that and that was a really bad mistake by by Shy. But he pulled it back and the thing is, 
Quinn is like the best duelist of the AD carries. And so if you get to the point where someone is out of position, you can train that person down. And that's exactly what happened. Like Vault and Blind are both really good in that kind of matchup. And it played out that way. Yeah, Vela's burst was definitely helping out. Right, the next matchup was, of course, uh, a Lee Sin versus Lee Sin duel as Cool took on QTV. It did look like Lee Sin was able to restore sight to the blind monk, beating QTV and earning a point for his team, keeping him in the game. What, was, what do you think of that, Crepper? Uh, bad puns. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> just, I just wanted to note, I mean, it's a Lee Sin matchup going both ways. It's killed a little differently, and that's all interesting. The most interesting part for me was that QTV was running X Frequence, because we were all sitting here like, oh yeah, he's going he's gonna to hit level 2 now, and he's, he's going to get wrecked, and suddenly like, QTV hits level 2 first, and you're like, how? How is that possible? Because <laughs> he must have been running XP Quince there. Yep. Uh, sadly enough, he didn't push the first wave to really make... Because he could have traded CS uh, and uh, for damage because he would have hit level 2 first and just been able to all-in, but he was too afraid to, to lose the matchup in the, in the first level. Uh, and that could have been a really interesting scenario, but yeah, Cool played it uh, really well and he just was the better least in player. We were also talking about the fact that when he fell a little behind, Probably his best option was to back spend some money yeah. and maybe just try all in. But also, he actually, when he got level two, he went in and then he completely missed the queue. I think he landed in the bush or something, and that was actually his chance. And yeah, as you said, then he should have recalled. Back, yeah, get back to lane. Right. The next matchup was the duos of Double of the Mad Life taking on Varus and Kennen. Uh, sorry, they were playing Varus and Kennen against Diamond and Bjergsen, who were on Brand and Annie. So Team Fire, Diamond and Bjergsen, they played a thematic duo. Both of the champions were flame-based, both of them were on fire. And Mad Life actually has a history against these champions. He's failed to win with them in, I believe it was OGN, and then has lost to this duo twice. Monty, uh, tell us a little bit of story about this. Yeah, this was the second loss, and it's particularly funny. I don't. I think that it was picked by Team Fire just because they're Fire champions, but this actually probably brought back a lot of bad memories for Mad Life. So back uh, a few seasons of Champions ago, uh, Frost picked a brand any bot lane as kind of a disrespect uh, against the KT Rolster Arrows and lost the game. And then what happened was in Club Masters, KT was up uh, over Frost, and so they picked the Annie brand bot lane mm -hmm. and then beat Mad Life and Wung with it. And so losing here again probably stings a little bit for Mad Life, who has a really bad history with any brand lane, strangely enough. Yeah, I, maybe it's just Stunlock. It's just CC, <laughs> doesn't it? But, but that was very close. The level one or level two engage, uh, I believe it was Diamond, just got away by the skin of his teeth, mm -hmm. almost giving the victory over to Team Ice. Uh, it was very dramatic. I've actually played it. When, uh, whenever me and Froggen used to do a queue, we'd either run like any brand or Thresh and Lee Sin. But the any brand lanes, it's really interesting. You feel like you're really powerful, but you need to wait at least to level three until you have one of each spell so you can really rely on that spell burst because you'll go all in and then you're out of ammunition and then you'll get turned on and that almost happened but yeah. they managed to survive and then get enough spells down to yeah get a con convincing victory it wasn't close at all convincing <laughs> victory I like that then of course it all came down to the very last battle the super 1v1 Froggen was playing Yasuo against Wei Zhao on Jarvan now Wei Zhao will simply not forgive himself as the winds were in Froggen's favor as he took down the tower to Fisher, what did you think of that matchup? well the matchup itself I actually felt was in favor of Froggen. Also because, first of all, he started Q at level 1, which I really liked, because he didn't want to get in range of uh, the auto attack from Jarvan early on with the passive bonk in your head. <laughs> and also, Wei Xiao decided to build towards Brutalizer, where Froggen just went straight down his blades. So he was stronger there in the early fights, and also he could just jump around, cut around Jarvan. Kobe talked about how hard it is for Jarvan to actually hit him. And we just have to say, Froggen, he is 100% pure Danish. <laughs> and that's why he's doing so well here. <laughs> well, Bjergsen won his matchup. We'll have yeah. to see what and the not, Queen says I'm about him. I'm not convinced yet. I'm not convinced. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So here is a final look at how teams Ice and Fire fared over the course of the All-Star Challenge. Team Fear was hot right out of the gate and took an early lead with a commanding performance in our Ultra Rapid Fire Mount. Not to be outdone, outdone rather. Team Ice surged forward to take the lead with wins in Hexakill and the pick 10, making the score four to two. And as uh, we just saw in the 2v2, Fire was able to pull the points back to a tie. In the Super Fun 1v1, Froggen extinguished the competition and secured the final three points and the win. We are now going to award a most valuable player of the All-Star Challenges. It is a completely arbitrary honor. It carries with it no banner, no signal, no trophy, only personal satisfaction and bragging rights. It is merely the most valuable player of the All-Star Challenge Paris 2014, as determined by a panel of one. Mitch Crepo Forspols. And if you have, have any issues with his choice or the means by which he reached it, our only defense of this is...
because Crepo says so. Now, can I please ask everybody at the table to raise their Crepos? We are entrusting you, you with a very great responsibility, Crepo. Who is your All-Star Paris 2014 Challenge MVP? Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if Fire would have won, I would have uh, nominated Dominate, uh, not Dominate, uh, Double Lift as the MVP because he was very instrumental to all of Fire's victories <laughs> by feeding. But I really, I've, I have to hand it to Cool. He was uh, a really good, uh, really good player. He wasn't supposed to be here. He subbed in all of a sudden, and then just, yeah, Ice look revitalized. They started playing better. Oh, he's a really insanely sin player. So for me, he gets the MVP vote because yeah. I say so. Definitely stepped up his game. Can Didn't comment? lose a single game. I mean, he came back and just won everything, and here's his one-on-one -on -one as well, of course. He was actually ahead of Q to be pretty much the entire time, so it's just a matter of time before he'd won on, on CS if he didn't kill him. Very exciting game. Managed to get the last hit there right at the end. And like we've rightly pointed out, coming in, you know, covering for Tsao Mei. Yeah, and well, the funny thing as well is his team now, or former team, I guess he still sub for them, is in the final as well, OMG. He played <laughs> former team, is, is he leaving OMG to join <laughs> Team Fire? I think so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would do so, man, they're winning everything. <laughs> <laughs> so, quick uh, last comment there on Cools, seeing as our yeah. OMG expert is at the end of the table. Yeah, he's awesome, right? And, and the great thing about this is, so he's obviously a phenomenal, like, world-class individual player, and there's someone even better than him in the mid lane, helming the team for the uh, final, so, you know, go OMG. Now, I do have one last uh, comment, seeing as I set this one up. To close it out, if you guys at home do have any complaints about the MVP selection or you feel somebody else should have won it, please complain to at Scumbag Crepo on Twitter. It is his choice. It is his problem. It was <laughs> him saying so. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, I believe...